Divine Truth Assistance Group Group Assistance Sessions Putting Principles of Divine Truth into Action This recording is from the Developing My Loving Self Group and is part of an Education in Love series. In the Session 2 Reminders and Homework Review Presentation, Mary revises and provides reminders from the Removing My Loving Self two-day session and reviews the homework of the participants. Recorded on the 10th of June, 2016, in New Seville, Queensland, Australia. Well, welcome to your final two days of developing my loving self. It's been a bit of a ride for me too. <laughs> um, it's good stuff to talk about, hey? Today we're going to get into some really... Well, it's kind of different. We're changing track a little bit, um, talking about the real self, developing the real self, which, uh, as I shared with you uh, on Wednesday afternoon, I, I get really excited about it. Uh, but before we do that, my job is to review what we've learned so far or what we've heard so far with you all, <laughs> because really we are changing track now here a bit. We're not going to revisit much of this stuff that we've already looked at and um, yeah it's quite it's quite sort of separate in a way because as you can see the real self doesn't appear in this diagram at all does it so it's very interesting the way these two things uh, the real self and this uh, are related or not related so you'll have the opportunity to ask questions of Jesus of that over the coming two days and on that note I'll probably encourage those of you who haven't participated thus far to take a risk, participate. You don't have to, but it's your last chance for a little while to, to get engaged with the material and, and, you know, maybe challenge a few little fears of speaking up and being, being here and being open about yourself. Yeah. All right. So let's look at what we have learned so far. Let's go all the way back to the beginning. What was the name of our very first session, the first two days? What was the overall name? Joellen? Creation of my pain. <gasps> no. That was the, no, but stay there. What was the name of the overall session of the two days? Oh, um, oh that's all right. Does someone remove, else know? Removing my, no, um, no. No, I that's okay. It. On the spot. If we just go in front of you there to, uh, sorry. Your name, Katrina. I got it. Um, understanding how the pain was created, like inside yourself. Yeah. Yes, we did yeah. talk about that a lot, definitely. But there's an overall name that we had for the first two days. If we come to Kerry on this side, understanding my oh no, sorry, you're in the right place. <laughs> <laughs> understanding my loving self. Was it my loving self? Understanding, understanding my unloving self. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Understanding my unloving self. Yes. And then the very first thing. Oh, somebody's sounding out a horn for us. <laughs> <laughs> That's how exciting it was. <laughs> da da da. -da. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we had understanding my unloving self. And as uh, Joellen and Katrina rightly said, the very first thing we talked about in that session, wasn't it, was about the creation of my pain. And within that, we talked about the major way that pain gets created. And that was, if you remember, via sin. And so how others have sinned against us, but most importantly, the thing that creates the most pain in our life was how we are sinning and currently sinning. Yeah. And we talked about how all of that sin kind of manifests in ourselves as fear and erroneous versions of love. So errors in the way we understand love and truth. Okay, what was the next, the next talk? Who remembers? Casting your mind back, Sage. 
The creation of our facade? Yes. And if you remember, the way that the facade is created was through being taught to fear this pain, wasn't it? Yep. And then so we were taught that, and then again, what happens? We made choices to never challenge that fear, to continue fearing the pain. Okay, the third, the third topic in the first session was, Ange? Accepting our facade? Yes. Yep. Accepting facade. And if you remember, there was two major things within that talk, wasn't there? Does anyone remember what they were? How we go about it? I'll, I'll tell you because I want to rush through a little bit this morning. I want to focus on the homework. In accepting the facade, we had to accept the state of how it is. Remember Graham put it really nicely, well, it's here now and we're going to have to accept that it's here. <laughs> and so that's understanding all the ways that it exists and all the techniques we're using and the denial of truth and all of that stuff, the motivations of the facade, we have to accept that. Um, and there was one key thing that was going to help us to do that. Graham? Oh, just call it out, it's okay. Compassion. Compassion, yeah, yeah. Yep, the crucial thing in accepting the facade. And all the way through this, Jesus was talking to us, wasn't he, about the four tools, developing an aspiration to even use the tools and have the tools as we go through this process. So what are the four tools? You can call them out. Faith. Faith. Truth. 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 Action. And emotion. And then we, we can kind of add to a really major theme, isn't it, of compassion. And how compassion, compassion actually helps us with all of these things. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to put that up there as well. All right, so that was our first session. Now let's quickly go through our second session, which was called, who can tell me? Eloisa at the back. Now. Removing my unloving self. Yes. Okay, and who knows the, the first talk that we had? My unloving self, there we go. Who, yep, uh, Zoe? Uh, governing emotions. Yes, yes. Now that was really interesting, wasn't it? Because we started to learn that actually there's a way that we can deal with emotion that is going to make it easier as if we deal with the biggest stuff, the global emotions, we're going to be able to deal with a lot of other stuff much more easily. And if we ignore those things, we're going to be fighting them all the time, aren't we? Yeah. And remember we had the great diagram of God's view of my pain and our view of our pain, which, which was huge. The pain and terror. Yeah. Okay. Um, what was the second one we had? Uh, Lily? Uh, deconstructing my facade. Yes. Yep. And do you want to tell us two major ways we do that? Um, the bit that was like the streamers coming down from the ceiling for me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> was realizing that we can do it without having to go to the pain bit below. Yeah. Like we can get rid of all of our addictions by feeling all the judgment and the justifications and the, the um, minimization all and of that yes and then we can get rid of all of that and then move on yes yeah awesome that was a good thing to know wasn't it and remember we talked about the two primary motivations of the facade which was to a you could call it out avoid pain <laughs> Sorry, I did it wrong. Desensitise from pain and avoid our fear. That's right. So the key thing in deconstructing is going to be... Sensitise to pain and feel terror. Absolutely. So it's kind of simple, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> simple, but maybe not easy. <laughs> Takes a bit of effort. All right. And what was the final thing we talked about in our second session? The final 
major topic. And this is the bit where, yeah, Suzanne? Releasing my pain. Yes, yes. And what was the, one of the major things that you felt about that talk, something that hit you? Uh, it was really it just connected back into the first series, looking at the faith, truth, actions and emotions. That came then, through all the time, didn't it? <coughs> that these tools are going to help us at every step of the way. And, and at each step of the way, if we develop them, it's going to be much easier. Yeah. Yes. And what about the idea that, gosh, in order to get to releasing this pain, I have to have understood where my pain comes from, understood how my facade is created, accepted my facade, deconstructed my facade. Then I'll feel the pain and it won't be so hard. I'll be like a child, feeling the pain, feeling some fear, releasing some pain, feeling some fear. The relationship with God thing that lots of us get so frustrated about will become much more easy and s simpler then. So it was quite a, a big lesson there, wasn't it? Yeah. But the key thing is that in order to remove our unloving self, we have to understand and accept our unloving self first. And that was something Jesus has talked to you guys about a lot, isn't it? That lots of us get stuck there. Lots of us don't want to accept it. We just want to skip to releasing pain or, you know, skip to get onto some removing here, people. I just want to remove my facade rather than being compassionate about how it got there and being really clear and specific about what it is. What is the actual, you know, stuff that is in my facade? Because lots of us judge so much, we don't even want to acknowledge that what is really there and that slows us down. Okay. So that was a whistle-stop tour <laughs> of everything that, we, that was covered. And always remembering these tools that we have, faith, truth, action, emotion, and the lovely compassion that we're all leaving here ready to develop. Chris? Hi. Um, can I ask a question about the diagram on the board? Absolutely. Uh, I'm still a bit confused about something. Yeah. Are you saying that in the long run it's going to be quicker if I work on removing my facade before I get to the terror rather than working on one issue of going facade to terror to pain? Uh, working horizontally rather than vertically do you see what i mean you mean for individual issues yeah is rather that than working mean? individual issues through the whole system working on all of my facade first to expose all of my terror well do you see what i mean i think so i think some general things apply in that it will be very difficult for you to be sensitive to the... Glo Remember, this is a global terror of, say, it can be about being ourselves or being emotionally overwhelmed. It's going to be difficult to, act, to even be sensitive to that terror until we've done some work on our facade. Yeah. And remember, Jesus talked a lot about how sometimes we think we're feeling pain when really we're feeling like unhappy that our addiction is not being met or a bit of a tantrum that I'm going to have to give up a part of my facade or whatever. So I think that's a general principle that applies in that it will be pretty much impossible to deal with that unless you've at least done some work here. Yes, yes, yes. And as I shared with the group the other day, I mean, I can only speak from my experience here, which has m meant that I've had to do a lot of work deconstructing all of my facade, the majority of my facade, which is not to say that I don't still have some facade, but now I feel much closer to this terror. And nice. what I'm working through now is the particular justifications I have for avoiding my biggest issues, the things I'm most terrified about. Okay. But before that point, I really had a lot of um, addictions and denials in place that even kept me away from even wanting to know what my biggest terrors were about. So I'm not sure if I'm really answering your question completely. Jesus wants to talk about it. Just make sure I'm up. Yep. Um, the answer pretty much is yes, Chris. 
um, you're going to have to work laterally before you can work vertically, if you like. And, and this is where I see many of you trying to work vertically down through the issue, but, but because the addictions prevent you, the, the, the purpose of the addictions is to avoid the terror. So unless you've released a lot of your addictions, you're not going to even get to touch a terror. You're just really not. And, and most of you want to go, you think you can go from with one issue down through the whole thing, but, but the only way that is possible is if there's no terror associated with that particular thing, and that's very unlikely. So, so yes, you'd be far better off working through deconstructing all or most of your addictions, and as Mary just pointed out to you, that's when you expose your terror. Your terror has to be exposed as an emotion, and it's got a whole lot of emotions covering it. So naturally, you're going to have to get rid of the emotions covering it, which are all related to addiction and your justification for your addictions, mm -hmm. rather than just try to dig down into the pain of that. You, you're going to have to remove all of the justifications of your addictions before the terror will be exposed. And you don't even really at that stage know what the pain's about. No. And, and, it's, and, and many of you guess, and, and unfortunately erroneously guess, which means you're processing uh, what I'd call delusional or, or emotions you're manufacturing rather than actual truth. So and, and those emotions are in effect facade. They're just building more facade when you're doing that, actually. Because yeah. yeah. you, there's nothing real about what you're feeling. You're, tr you're guessing and trying to feel that. And you're, that's actually an avoidance of deconstructing all that. Yeah. 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 So, the, so the basic answer to your question is yes. Work, work horizontally through the diagram. So if you're in denial about a lot of things, you're going to have to firstly address your denial about all those things and what, mo what emotions motivate denial. And then when you get down to your addictions, you start to become aware of your addictions. Now you're going to have to, be, you have to, go, going to address the emotions that determine your addictions. What, what emotions are driving your addictions? And they are all based on justifications that you have emotionally, not, not intellectually. They're all emotional justifications. Work through those. If you work through those substantially, then you'll really expose your terror properly and the terror will become really easy to feel then uh, because it's right there. It's right in your face and it's right in your face every day. So eventually you'll feel it. And then once you've felt your terror, now all of your false beliefs and, and, and other issues like that are now emotionally exposed to you. You can see them a lot more clearly. So if you try to get to them before you've done your terror, then you won't see them. The every every uh, like area above really clouds your view and clouds your emotional perception of the area underneath. Mm. Okay, thanks. Cool. Is there any other questions on that while we're there, Pete? Thanks, Lani. Just using that diagram again, um, where do we start to open up to our sleep state experiences? Because I'm totally blocked to that at the moment. Yep. So is it a combination of the facade and the terror that prevents us from well, our awareness? I think it depends on what's preventing your awareness. If you want to stay in denial about a lot of your issues, yeah. That's that overriding. You, I think, Pete, uh, if you just focus on working on the deconstruction of your facade, yeah. you're going to become aware of that. It just automatically opens you up. Not automatically. You've got to want to. But the facade, like opening up to our sleep state experiences will just be a direct result for working our way through this? Or no, not? no. I, like, I want to just be clear about that. Like working our way through this is is a lot of what stops a lot of our desires, for sure. Yeah. But I would say even more the terrorist and the pain stops our desires. So this is an issue of will as well, if you think back to the first group. Just because you automatically remove something, it doesn't mean you suddenly have a will for something else. Okay. Yeah. Do you see that? It's quite... Jesus talked about that a bit with Monique in her question the other day. But it's quite because uh, I have had that feeling as well. Like, if I just clear away this stuff, then I'll magically be supercharged for yeah. love, you know, and that's that not doesn't happen, you know. Obviously, a lot of these issues prevent, like, they're our excuses for yeah. not using our will to love. So, working through them is good. But my feeling is you still have to develop the desire to know. 
So don't just assume I'll just work through stuff until I until I know. You can grow the desire yeah. to know right now. Yeah. That will confront some of your desires for denial. And if you're humble to them, then you'll know. So with us going back to the sleep state, I can be desiring to want to understand what's going on in my sleep state while I'm doing this. At the same well, time. Y- y- Not you have to grow the desire because yeah. at the moment you don't. Yeah. So if you work on why you don't desire it, that will help grow the desire. It will help challenge some of these things as well. Cool. Thanks. That makes sense? Yeah. Okay. Uh, N- uh, Nikki, yep. I want to get on to her homework. So, we'll um, Where is the hurt self in this diagram? Here. At pain and sin. Pain and sin, okay. Yeah. 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 And the fear, I mean the fear as well is hurt, but yeah. Generally speaking, the childhood pain and stuff is is down here. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's talk about homework, eh? Who loves doing their homework? No. Two people. Yeah, <laughs> three people. <laughs> Who is like, oh, this is hard homework? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good sign, hey? You got real about it. It wasn't just a facade exercise. Yeah. All right. So the first question was, what am I currently doing to develop faith? Uh, and you've got some questions there, but let's just hear from someone uh, on that answer who would like to share what they found about themselves. Fabio? Thanks. Um, I, um, I started off by thinking, like, you know, I didn't... I'm not doing anything. Yep. But then I thought that's not true entirely because I'm here. So mm-hmm. so I've got some development of faith and I, you know, I listened to some stuff at home. So I'm, but I'm not doing much at all and that was pretty confronting. I, I thought I did a lot more than what I am doing. Yes, yeah. But I did want to blanket with I don't do anything. Yeah. So I wanted to just disregard anything that I did learn. Yeah, because it's quite, it's funny, isn't it? Because sometimes we tell ourselves, yeah, I'm doing a lot of stuff. And then you sit down with the question and you go, I'm not doing anything. (laughs) And one is sort of denial, the other is denial. And there's a bit, you've got to come back to the truth. So listening to divine truth, which is, you're right, it's not much, is it? No, (laughs) but it's not nothing, so. (laughs) It's not nothing, (laughs) I agree. (laughs) In that, why I say that is that faith is an emotion that grows inside of us through our own experiences. So you're coming and having an experience here, but just listening and not really feeling is not going to develop any faith, is it? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Cheers. Who else? Uh, If we go at the back to Miranda, and then on this side, did someone have their hand up over here? Yeah, Alex, we'll go to you after that. Oops. Oops. Um, keep reminding myself, sorry, reminding myself that God is good, that God knows more about me than I do, and God wants the best for me, and to take to heart when I experience the results of feeling an emotion, situation, false beliefs, addictions, facade, blah, 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 yep. that I would feel better. Yes, so, so I'm going to call that reminding of... Past experiences, yeah. positive ones. That is a way you can build faith, yeah. Okay, Alex, what did you have? Um, I'm not sure if it's along the same lines, but it was if you actually feel a real emotion or some something that you've had faith in that then um, further strengthens that, th- that faith... Um, so you mean you're sort of working with a concept or an idea, maybe ba- pa- based a little bit on past experience, you have a new experience and it builds upon the past one? Yeah, definitely. Yep. Yeah, yep. I feel like that big time builds cool. faith. Yeah. Cool. Yes. In fact, that's kind of building faith, isn't it? Yeah. All right. Uh, Laura and anyone else on this side? Nope. Nobody wants to share. Um, so... I've been sort of asking, like, what what is faith? And then um, I, I might get some, like, over the next few days, a bit of um, a bit of an idea, or just you know, 
um, connecting more with what what faith is, I guess. I don't know, asking God and, um, and yeah, just to help me understand. <laughs> yeah, so you, you're saying you kind of have a seeking uh, heart yeah. about faith, whereas in the past you just sort yeah. of ignored it. And from the perspective that, that I don't actually know what it is. Yeah. But then after hearing like the talks about how we've used faith for all these physical things, yeah. then I can't say that I really don't know what it is because I, I do. I use it all the time. Yeah. And Jesus has written out a definition really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. So really it sounds like um, what I would do in your position is – look at why I don't want to have faith yeah. in God's truth. Yeah. I'll have faith in gravity or whatever. So yeah. rather than kind of it's a little bit of a facade going, oh, God, could you just show me what faith yeah, is sort yeah. of thing. It's a little bit instead of saying it's sort of it's not really sincere, I suppose, is yeah. what I'm saying. <laughs> you know, it's more honest to say, look, I, intellectually, I can see that I engage with faith. So it's not a mystery, the concept of faith to me. Yeah. But there's a particular faith that I don't want to develop at the moment yeah, yeah. and my life is showing me. And <laughs> that's faith in God's way. Yeah. So why don't I want to? Yeah, right. And that gets to your fourth question, the current condition of your aspiration to develop faith. Yeah. Which is, don't really want to and there must be a reason. Yeah, okay. So to look at the beliefs that are supporting that aspiration. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Did anyone actually answer the fourth and fifth questions with regards to faith? Anna? If you just keep your hand up, Anna. Yeah. Keep your hand up. Yeah. No. Shit. <laughs> yeah, just for the recording, Anna said, I was just putting up my hand to say that I uh, I answered the question, not that I wanted to tell you the answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you want to or you don't have to? Uh, okay, I'll do it. Yeah, great. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, so at the moment there's a very small part of me that wants to develop my faith. Uh, what I notice that stops me developing my faith is my investment in doubt. I love I love feeling doubt because it keeps me on the fence and it gives me more options. Yes. That's what I think. And so what does it get you to stay on the fence about? Like what is it that you get to avoid? My soulmate, my relationship with God and the choices that I have in my life, whether I can run away to a different country and avoid everything in my life. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I suppose what I'm asking is, I, that's, that's awesome that you know, but um, – what are the feelings you have that are associated with God, your soulmate, and not being able to run away? Because they're the things that are causing you to desire to doubt. So the feelings you have when you consider not doubting and consider yeah. God and consider your soulmate and consider not running away, yeah. they're the things that are blocking your faith, those like emotions. Potential social rejection. and Yeah. Pain. So sure, nobody's going to accept me, I'll be a freak, my family yeah. won't love me, like definitely. Yeah. yeah, they're all things that I've, that I've um, had to deal with too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for being brave. <laughs> all right, anyone else answer that last question? Yvonne? Um, I bumped right into my facade on this one. Um, because I've got this facade that tells me that I think I'm okay because I've had a bit of experience and developed a tiny little bit of faith so I think I've done it. Yeah. And my f and uh, and it's easy for me to stay in that facade and then not go on any further. Yes. So if I, yeah, I just keep uh, hold the thought because I just want to mention something. These qualities, hey, faith, truth, action, emotional, the tools, if you like, and even compassion, they're not something that you just get. And that's it, oh, I've got that one, ticked it off the list. If you think about the level of faith, the allowance and acceptance and desire for truth and the willingness to act in harmony with love and the humility, the complete humility to emotion that's even required to become at one with God and you consider 
I just had a cry and I stood up to someone who was trying to bully me and I saw the truth about myself and yeah. I got a little bit of faith. If you compare those two states, it's, it's, it's really different, isn't it? If you can imagine that. So it's something, it's a, it's a good thing to notice, Yvonne, that it's not just like, oh, ticked it off. Good Which is what I've always done. Yeah. <laughs> about yeah. everything, as you yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because there's an addiction in that, isn't yes. there? There's a feeling of like, oh, no, I'm doing okay. Yes. I've got it. Oh, it'll be all right. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I think it's the first time I've won an argument with my facade. It feels like that anyway. <laughs> um, because I realised then that faith's the only thing that's going to pull me through this. Like, and you can't have too much faith. And um, And never say that it's okay, but I've that I'm there or, or whatever. So I really need to keep working on doing all the things that I've been doing to develop faith, which includes listening to truth but specifically educating myself because there are a lot of great talks about um, faith and prayer and um, the Solomon message and... Um, yep. Um, and I, I actually love reading um, the pageant messages Yep. Um, builds my faith and practicing I'm not very successful very often but practicing doing the experiment I find um, also also does that too sorry yeah. I'm a bit dyslexic no it's lovely <laughs> it's lovely Yvonne yeah it's okay. lovely to hear from you sort of open like that yeah yeah so that's another thing that you're doing the specifics of faith so sort of a little bit like what I was saying to Laura, let's get real about what it is really about because we've got a lot of education available to us and then let that, that concept confront us emotionally for all the reasons that we don't want it, like I mentioned to Anna. And then the last one that I put on the list is about evidence. So if you think about here, this reminder of past experiences, it's like gathering evidence for ourselves, isn't it? And staying with them because often... The facade, because it wants to avoid the global terror, it will discount any past experience. Yes, who's experienced that? You know, you can feel like, wow, I worked through something. I, feel, I can feel the change in my life. Two months later, something really big comes up that might have some serious terror associated with it, and you're like, it doesn't work. It's, I'm not getting anywhere. This do, it's no good. I don't even know why I'm listening to these idiots. You know, all that stuff happens. <laughs> I've thrown my life away trying to cry. <laughs> like <laughs> All this drama of the facade, which is really just avoiding continuing in the process and developing the faith. So looking at the evidence from your life, but also you can look around you and the evidence in other people, can't you? And if you think about it, as a kid, we grow faith in a lot of physical things because we see someone else has done it. Or we see some evidence. So that's another way that I thought about that you grow faith. Okay. Let's move on to your second question. I'd love to talk to you guys about this all day because I just <laughs> love these questions. But let's get on to this is, this is a business end, isn't it? Faith and terror. So what our next question is, what am I currently doing to remove my resistance to terror and fear? Who went, up? Oh, blank page on that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Lani, do you want to say? Yeah. Um, I've actually been through a pretty strange experience lately. I've been kind of lulled to sleep. Just, uh, yeah, wait. kind of lulled into this false, like all the thoughts in my head stopped and I came into this really quiet place and I thought, oh, okay, I've, you know, I've done enough now. <laughs> You know, and then people are saying, actually, external people are saying to me, have you finished yet? You know. On your terror and fear, is that yeah. what they're saying? Do you, yeah. do you still have to keep going? And, you know, and it was like, and now I realise it's just complete resistance. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. Internally, you've gone, that's enough now. Yeah. I don't want to keep looking at this. And you the wonderful law of attraction is showing you exactly yeah. what you are feeling inside by having people say it to you. Yeah. 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 But it was a real resistance. It was like a solid concrete kind of block over there. And it's yeah. only by being here 
that um, it's been able to filter through, that yep. the terror is still just there. doesn't want to be addressed, yeah. yeah. So the yeah. key is for you then looking at what is the basis for my resistance? What is it I believe about keeping on going that's making me want to stop? Oh, yeah, that's too, all too hard. and Yeah. Or yeah. Don't, just be careful and don't answer it now. Okay. It's something for you to think about. But just be careful of the throwaway comments that we use. I've used them a lot. It's just like, oh, well, it's all too hard and I can't. And, da, da, da. and a lot of times that's an avoidance of getting really specific and it's in the specificity <laughs> that is the emotion. It's like you don't really have generalised emotions they they relate to something always and it's really easy to do throwaways i call them throwaway comments you know when you're just like oh it's all too hard i don't believe in myself i just feel bad about myself you know all those things while they might be like a general statement about an, a specific set of emotions that you have if you're going to actually release these things it gets specific Makes sense? Makes sense, everyone? Yeah. Okay, let's go back to Pete because he had his hand up. Yeah, when I looked at the fear and terror, it's like, man, this is easy. Um, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing to write down. I haven't done any of it. Um, and so then I was like, okay, well, I've got to do my homework. So I was like, okay. Um, so I, I went to the observation point of view and it's like, wow, I need to develop an aspiration to start with. Yes. And then... Then I went, it shows how much I can do to improve from where I am in my faith and remove terror. So, like, there was I can huge, see there's room to grow. There's a huge yeah. opportunity here. And then it was like, and then the real one for me was, I can't change unless my desire, aspirations, and actions change. So, I'm, That's true. I'm not going to get anywhere with this. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep going, like, yeah, yep. life's cool. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing's happening. Yes. Deny, deny, deny. Yeah. Yeah. So now I'm going to pin you guys down because that's a – yes, I agree. But what are the beliefs you have that cause you to have no aspiration? The beliefs. Yes. And again, if you haven't, if you haven't answered it, I'm just saying generally, like, guys, look at that. It's, it's so important to go, oh, well, I'm just going to develop – you can just say, I'm going to develop an aspiration. I'll just work on these four things and sort of – by next week, you're like, what am I doing again? Because <laughs> you didn't really hit anything of substance. You just used some words about some concepts that you've heard, but you didn't actually go to, hang on, I don't have an aspiration. It means I don't want one. And there's specific things I feel that cause me to justify not having one. What are the specifics? Laura? Laura? Um, even when I was last here, I felt that, that that terror was just so deep down and it was so, like, locked away and it was going to be this huge, like, mission to try to get to it. And so I just went, well, don't worry about it. It'll pop up when it pops up. But my daughter over the past two days cannot see her shoes that are right in front of her, is looking for a teddy that's right in front of her and it went to show me it is actually right in front of me and the excuse was... It's buried and buried and buried. Don't worry about it yet. Yeah. And it was just showing that it's right yeah. there if I just soften into it. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool, hey. That's a good observation. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, and I feel that for you, Laura. Like it, it's not as far – there's a lot of fear there that you sort of – and I understand it because I do it myself. It's like, oh, no, I'll get to it when I get to it. I'll just keep working on this thing, you know, and it's really avoiding right now. I feel terrified. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Did anyone else uh, look at their beliefs underpinning their aspiration or lack thereof? Uh, if we go to Phoebe, just right there. And on this side, Megan. Um, so I, I wrote down a few beliefs. Yeah. Um, such as, like, my life will get a whole lot worse. If I feel my terror. Um, Did you get even more specific about how? Uh, that I'll lose every, like everyone around me. No one will want anything to do with me anymore. Yep. Uh, and this feeling like if I start to feel it, it's I'm never going to come out of it. Like mm -hmm. that, every, yeah, everything that I'm fearing in that moment is going to become real. Like yep. 
even though it probably actually already is real, um, and that that I will actually die, like that I feel like that could actually happen. And so I was looking at those beliefs, but are they actually just justifications for yeah for that? Because I've are. always thought so. They're not actually the real false beliefs about my false definitions of no. yeah. They're just your justification yeah. for not feeling. Yeah. But that's, it's excellent that you've identified them because they are emotional justifications that you will have to work through letting go of. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, that was just like kind of like a light bulb moment for me. Really. Awesome. Yeah. Hey? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Cool. And in a way it's kind of simpler that way, isn't it? Yeah. And you remember what Jesus was saying to Chris earlier, that you don't really know what this is about until you get there. No. And this mind that we have can be a great tool or it can be a great diversion, you know, where we decide what we're really terrified about and what the pain is going to be under it. And it's all kind of, as I mentioned, just sort of a facade technique to just stay away from it. Yeah. 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 So that yeah. was kind of cool. <laughs> cool. Cool. Uh, Megan was on this side. I'm wondering actually if I've just done the same thing as Laura was saying. If you just uh, hold it. Um, I feel either that um, I won't be able to achieve something that I would like or uh, the flip side of that, it better be, I better be really good at it. I better really achieve it and be outstanding at it. But that's Mm. possibly, um, it's possibly still in the facade. Stuff. Yeah. So this is what you feel when you consider feeling terror, is it? Um, or just or developing an aspiration for anything, really? For anything. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great way to avoid aspiration, holding on to this desire of perfectionism, isn't it? Yeah. Like, I've got to be perfect. Now, that desire to be perfect is an avoidance of an emotion. It's a facade, a facade-based yeah. desire to avoid some other emotion which you need to uncover. What is it you feel you'll be if you're not perfect? And even the, oh, I just don't, I give up, it's, it's all too hard, I can't do it, is the flip side of perfectionism yeah. if you think about it. It's like, well, if I can't be perfect, I'm not doing it. And that's kind of angry. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So I, f- for you, I would be looking at my anger. Anger. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Cool. All right, Suzanne in front of you and Rachel. Oh, sorry, uh, we'll go to Canaan and then come into you, Rachel. Yeah. Mary, when I, oh, <laughs> when I got to the bits of the homework, like faith was quite easy because we've really been working on that for two sessions now. Yeah. And But when I got to the questions about my fear and my terror, yeah. not only did I not come up with anything it's just like I had a complete brain shut down so what sort of techniques do you use have you experienced that and and what do you do when that happens well I would be honest about the fact that my brain hasn't stopped working (laughs) 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 I'm still thinking it's just that I don't want to yeah that I and to be really truthful about myself that I don't want to, to and start from there and and I I did that like it was yeah. so obvious. Yeah. So I did that, but then what do you do after that? Do you do you wait a while and come back to it, or do you go and look at more material, or do you read more? I no, honestly, probably in that situation, I sit with myself and my journal. Okay. You know, and I'm not always perfect at this, but if I get results, this is how it works. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't seek out any – if I'm to that point where I know, I don't want to know. Yeah. Uh, and I know that I don't want to know. My main purpose is seeking why I don't want to know. And so I let the law of attraction is always working anyway. It might show me something. Mm-hmm. But I spend a lot of time on my own, um, right. walking, writing – why don't I want to know? And usually anger comes up for me, honestly, Suze. Oh, great. Um, which you. is, it's not causal in any way, but it's showing me this is how much I don't want to. And then you have the benefit of once you've got some emotion there, you can start you can work to with that. work with why am I angry here? What is my justification? 
which usually leads you to some kind of false belief of like, similar to what Phoebe said, I can't survive or I'm, you know, it's all still justification, but at least you're feeling something you're that is blocking something. you. Yeah. yeah. So like what I normally do when I get there is just go, oh, I'll just have to wait. But you sort of outweigh, what you do is outwork your mind. You just stay in longer than the mind wants to hang on. Well, I, I mean, I don't feel like I'm... It's sort of funny how you put it. It's like you're putting yourself in opposition to your mind. Mm. Remember, your mind is working for your facade. Yeah. It's an expression of your will. So it's not about, like, overcoming your mind. It's, it's understanding how the facade is using the mind to get what you want. To just shut me out. No feelings. Yeah. No feelings. Consider terror, no feelings. Numb That's out. It. You know, go away from myself. So um, I feel that the issue is what you said is actually it's a very passive state that you go into, isn't it? Oh, I'll just wait. It's almost like if you asked me my name, I couldn't tell you. Like there's nothing there yeah. at all. Yeah. Yeah. So like, like you said, just recognise what's happening. Make some notes about that. Move around, walk. Yep. And just come back again. Yep. Yeah, that's what I do. Yeah. But also, Suze, I would also, now that you're not in that state and you're talking to me, you can analyse it a little bit and say, like, um, I'm obviously so terrified of any feelings mm, I that I don't even want to have an intellectual awareness of how terrified I am. Right. Yeah. Jesus wants to add. If I can add, so for yourself, you've, you've neglected to listen to Mary actually in this feedback, so you really mm. need to listen to what she actually said to you. Okay. One of the primary things she said to you is that you're very angry and you're not seeing mm. that you're angry. No, I'm not. And, and what is anger? If you look at the diagram, it's when your addictions are not getting met. Right. So you, you want to close down yourself and not even be aware that you're very angry, but the desire to close down yourself is because you're very angry about having to deal with the terror. Mm. Very angry, and you're going to have to go through that anger. Mm. And if you don't go through that anger, you're never going to get to it. Mm. And you don't want to feel angry. You think it's unspiritual to feel angry. You've got a lot of false beliefs about anger. And you don't want to feel it, but it's all to do with your addiction not getting met. That's why you go into this numb out state. So you, you actually purposefully go back into denial, complete denial. Right. You're purposely going back up the scale. You're using your will to get out of what the addiction is. And, and Mary said another thing to you that you've almost completely dismissed, and that is always ask yourself why. Always ask why. And, and you've, you've also ignored her comment to, her, to you about that as well. You skipped over that. So it's interesting, the two very things you need to address okay. are the two very things that Mary mentioned and they are the two very things that you decided to completely ignore. Wow, okay. Mm. And that's an expression of your aspiration to ignore. Okay, yeah. 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 No, well that, that explains a lot. So. Yeah, yeah. That, um, I think that will be helpful for a lot of people actually. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay, yeah. thanks, cool. Mary. The anger, guys, is funny, isn't it? Like there's a lot of rage in us when these addictions don't get met. And we are, our lives are like, chock full of all these addictions and we avoid the natural consequence of you know the facades workings of not getting them met by just denying that anything's wrong at all and um it a, and that was really cool what jesus said hey it takes us back up away from the direction that we need to be going all right okay we're nearly out of time so the last question did anyone have any actions that they are taking to experience terror and fear. Uh, yep, Marie? The baby step of actually recognising when I am afraid. Instead of like in that nanosecond, I usually just split. Yep. So I'm actually starting to recognise that I'm a very fearful person. Yes. Do you know what I'd call that? You starting to develop an aspiration to feel fear. So you're not feeling fear yet. So we can't, it's not seriously an action taken to experience it, but you are working in that direction by developing, you're going, no, I'm going to be more real. When am I afraid? 
Yeah, yeah because I'd completely polarised with it and been in denial, so. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Cool. All righty, uh, Maxine. Oh, Rachel, sorry. And we had Kanan. Sorry. Kanan went to the bathroom. Oh, did he? So you go for it. Um, uh, do you want to speak about the previous or the this one? Well, it was about the previous, but yep. it kind of relates to this as well. Honestly, guys, I haven't spent much time on the the last one because I think we're all at the previous, which is all about facing the resistance to feeling terror and fear. I think if we're really honest, most of us aren't experiencing terror and fear and not in any large degree anyway. Yeah. So go ahead, Rachel. Yes. Yeah, so I'm trying to remember. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> I got carried away. Oh, it was about my reminders. Wait a second. <laughs> it was about the... Uh, completely lost. It's all right. It's all right. I feel we'll come like back showing up want. here is a big like action to take, and even showing up and asking questions, and I justify. I believe my f fear is real. Yeah. I really believe it, and I feel like I'm going to get attacked if yeah. I go there yep. or anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Sure. Okay. Cool. So that's some action. Yeah. If we come to Maxine now. Um. I'm recognising my facade to accept it Yep, and to develop a willingness to to go there. Yeah, because remember we said, didn't we, all the way through, in order to get to, to feeling any terror, we have to even firstly understand our facade and accept it. So, yeah, that's you starting, that's a, that's a positive step in the right direction. Yeah. All right. If we finish with Kanan then. Kanan, do you still remember even what you were going to say? <laughs> um, I think it was uh, about uh, issues of like w not wanting to take personal responsibility and things and um, wanting someone to take over for me. And um, yeah, I kind of <laughs> forgot a bit about So you're recognising that that's a resistance to terror and fear? Yeah, yeah. That that's a desire that you have that helps you yep. avoid... And, and, Terry, yeah. and, and like relationships and things where I've wanted the other person to like uh, do a lot of the jobs that I don't want to do and things and yeah 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 so starting to challenge those things will help yeah. you a lot with your resistance yeah that'll expose some emotions because that's an addiction isn't it that you've just yeah, described definitely. yeah yeah cool all right uh, guys that's all we've got time for I don't want to eat into Jesus's time in any way because it's um you know he's got already he's got so much to say in single hour allotments but um i hope that you've all had um some good stir up <laughs> through our first two sessions who feels like it's given them a bit of a reality check about things yeah and some really practical kind of understanding of what's involved yeah that's so good isn't it and um that's really something you can take away with you so yeah enjoy the rest of your day we'll thank you guys and we'll have a 10 minute break and be back at 11 30.